Today is Women's Day. What makes this day so special? Well, during apartheid, the government passed a law that said that all women of color had to carry around a passbook. A passbook is like what we would call our ID book today. It had all the women's information inside it. If they were caught by the police at any time of the day without their passbook, they would get into a lot of trouble. Well, In 1956, over 20,000 women came together to march to the union buildings in Pretoria to protest against these pass laws. The women stood in silence for 30 minutes and then started singing a protest song. Watinta bafazi, watintim bogoto. Watinta bafazi, watintim bogoto. You strike a woman, you strike a rock. 64 years later, This phrase represents women's courage and strength in South Africa. I'd like you to take a moment today to think of the woman in your life. Your vet, doctor, favorite author, godmother, mom, sports coach, teacher, aunt, and so many more who are kind, bold, strong, brave, loving, patient, funny, loyal, and hardworking. How can you celebrate them today? Greetings. My name is Paul and this is Leanne. And uh, happy Women's Day to all of you celebrating in South Africa today. Uh, Leanne and I have had a great thing happen in our lives. Greenpoint Park, our flat is very close to that uh, park, has reopened and we've just been loving walking around, bumping into some people. But we recognize that you might be in the park as well and we're not noticing each other because we're not recognizing oh, each other. Up. And so what we'd love to do is ask the cameraman to briefly pan away so that we can show you a little bit of lo- what we look like when we're out in the wild. So please do so. So here we are, Leanne's rocking the Cape Town City football cap. She's got glasses which steam up very quickly and she's got the fashionista leopard print mask. Myself, I'm more of a bandana and a baseball cap to protect my bald head kind of guy. But let's not be strangers if we bump into each other. Let's, Let's make sure that we are staying connected in these times. Good news is that we all get to be doing online church in the comfort of our homes. And so, masks off. Let's get them off. Okay, so with that very cheesy moment out of the way, we now get to worship together. And um, what an amazing time where we get to take the eyes off of ourselves and we get to place our eyes on our Saviour. We get to take our masks off. We get to take our masks off. We get to sing as loud as we would like to. um, And we get to worship God together, the Saviour who um, emptied Himself out, who gave up His life for us like a lamb slain, but is now in resurrection glory, in heaven, seated alongside God, ruling and reigning. That is the God that we get to worship. And I want to just read from Philippians chapter 2, where Paul describes this Christ. He says, Jesus, though he, did, though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself by taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men, And being found in human form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. And so let's worship this God. He was the lamb that was slain, but he is now the lion who is victorious and who is mighty and is so worthy of our praise and worship. Let's sing together. Yeah. 
He's roaring with power and fighting our battles. Every knee will bow before Him. Our God is the Lamb, the Lamb that was slain for the sins of the world. His blood breaks the chains. Every knee will bow before the Lion and the Lamb. Every knee will bow before Him. Make way before the King of Kings The God who comes to save Is here to set the captives free Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Our God is the Lion, the Lion of Judah He's roaring with power and fighting our battles bow before Him. Our God is the Lamb, the Lamb that was slain for the sins of the world. His blood breaks the chain. Every knee will bow before the Lion and the Lamb. Every knee will bow before Him. Every knee will bow before Him. the Lord Almighty. Who can stop the Lord Almighty? 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 Who can stop the Lord See him there, the great I am, a crown of thorns upon his head, the Father's heart displayed for us. Oh God, we thank you for the cross. Lift it up. On Calvary's hill, we cursed your name, and even still, you bore our shame, and paid the cost. Oh God, we thank you for the cross.
sacrifice for every sin I'll say to die the Lord of love can't be contained oh God has risen from the grave and though our God has risen from the grave oh behold the Lamb the story Redemption written on his hands. Jesus, he will reign forevermore. The victory is yours. We'll sing your praise. Endless hallelujahs to your holy name. Jesus, you will reign. the sun will bow before the King of Kings and oh God forever we will sing Behold the Lamb the story of redemption written on His hands Jesus you will the victory is yours. We'll sing your praise, endless hallelujah to your holy name. Jesus, you will reign forevermore. The victory is yours. Behold the Lamb, the story of redemption written on. Father, you reign and rule over everything, God. There is nothing outside of your power or your control, and we rest in that. You are the God who satisfies us, satisfies the desires of our hearts. You're our treasure, our comforter, our king. We lay our lives before you now, God, as we worship you. We praise you. We pour out praise and affection from the depths of our hearts, Lord. God, you are worthy of our praise, worthy of our lives, worthy of our affection. We glorify you tonight, God. In view of your great mercy, in light of all you've done, I present my life as a living sacrifice in view of your great mercy in light of all you've done I will love you God with all my strength and heart Lord this is my worship In Piloyan, Giaco, Tlizioyan, Giaco, Uhambola, Golaco, Gonke, Gonke, Gokako, In
Lord, we join with David when he declares, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. You're the lamb who's slain, you're the king who's risen, and you are also our shepherd, leading us, protecting us, guiding us through valleys, besides still waters. God, we look to you and we declare we shall not want not because we've stifled all our desires, we, we've lost interest. No, we shall not want because in you we find satisfaction at the deepest levels. It's in you, God, that we find all that we are connecting with, with the abundance of who you are. We thank you for that, God, and we continue to worship you now as we come to your word together. Amen. Hello, um, just to introduce ourselves again, my name is Leanne and this is Paul and we give leadership to the Inner City Congregation and just want to say welcome. It's so good that we get to be together today. If this is your first time, um, feel especially welcomed. You can fill in a welcome form that you'll find in the video description so that we can uh, serve you better. This is now a chance for parents with kids to go and set up their kids on a separate device. You can find the link to the kids program in the description below. Go for it. Parents, I hope you've been able to make it back in time. And we're going to continue now in our worship, just being so full of gratitude for the generosity of this community that continues to give to the cause of Christ. And if you haven't participated yet, the details are available on the different congregations' websites. But we do just want to lift up our hearts now to the Lord and say thank you, God, for your faithfulness to us as a community and multiply what we have uh, given back to you in this time. Mm. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna watch a short clip where Claudette just fills us in a little bit about Women's Day, the history behind it, and we're also gonna have a time of prayer together. So over to you, Claudette. Women's Day is a South African public holiday celebrated annually on 9 August. It commemorates the 1956 march of approximately 20,000 women to the union buildings in Pretoria to petition against the country's past laws. These laws required South Africans, defined as black, under the Population Registration Act, to a pass that served to maintain segregation, control urbanization, and manage migrant labor during the apartheid era. The women left 100,000 petitions at the office door of the Prime Minister. They stood silently for 30 minutes and then started singing a protest song that was composed in honor of the occasion. Watenta Bafazi, Watenta Mbokoto, translated, Now you have touched the woman, you have struck a rock. In the years since, the phrase has evolved to you strike a woman, you strike a rock, and it has come to represent women's courage and strength in South Africa. So why do we remember this day? Women's Day remembers the events of the 1956 March, but also keeps women's issues in the spotlight. This holiday can be used to highlight the multitude of challenges that African women still face today. This day can be used as a day to fight for or protest these ideas. As Christ followers, we play a unique role in discipling our families and our own hearts on a day like this. Why don't we take a moment to pray right now? Let's thank God for these bold, strong women who helped change the course of history in South Africa. Let's praise Him for how He used women then and uses women now.
Let's take a moment to lift up the issue of gender-based violence happening in our country right now. Pray that God would intervene in our country to change things like domestic violence, sexual harassment, pornography, unequal pay, and schooling disparities. Let's keep those prayers on our hearts for this week. Right now, I'm going to be handing over to Luke and Lauren, who will be sharing the message for this week. Thanks so much, Claudette. It's today we celebrate the contribution of women to our society today. Well, uh, you, you haven't seen Lauren with me uh, so far preaching. It's such a privilege to be teaming here with my wife as together we try and tackle week four of this uh, citizen series as we look at what does it mean to be citizens of God in a consumer-centric world? What does it mean to be citizens of God in a world that is so captured by consumerism? I wonder, have you ever wondered uh, why it is that we buy so many things we don't need? How so often after buying them, the, the, I don't know, the promise that we thought that it would deliver to our lives, we're left feeling dissatisfied and underwhelmed, even regretting buying it all together. Sometimes they end up collecting dust in our garages. Why is it that whenever our income tends to rise, our expenses quickly rise to match it? And, and it's not long after living in that new way of life where these things that we went without for so long that were kind of once have become our needs. I say in part it's because we live in a consumer world. We're going to try and address some of these questions together today. So there's going to be three parts to our message today. And uh, Luke's going to kick us off by looking at our consumer world and its traps for us as citizens. Then I'm going to be speaking to the aspect of citizenship that is particularly pertinent to consumerism. And then together we're going to land by talking about how we can live as capital C citizens in our consumer world. So let's start by reading the scripture for today in Genesis 1, verse 26. Then God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the heavens and over the livestock and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. And God blessed them. And God said to them, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the heavens and over every living thing that moves on the earth. And God said, behold, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is on the face of all the earth and every tree with seed and its fruit. You shall have them for food and to every beast of the earth and to every bird of the heavens and to everything that creeps on the earth, everything that has the breath of life. I have given every green plant for food. And it was so. Let's pray together. Father, we come, we come before you and we ask that you would coach us in this moment. Lord, we wanna be your capital C citizens representing you in the midst of this cultural moment, this present age right now. And so Holy Spirit, would you come and coach us? Come and lead us, we pray, as we look at your word. We ask this now in your name, Jesus. Amen. Okay, so as Lauren said, I'm gonna start off by looking at our consumer world. And before we do that, I wanna usher or 
issue a few disclaimers, if you will. The first disclaimer is this. To be a consumer is not a bad thing. Uh, to be human is to be a consumer. We, we read this in verse 29 and 30 where God said, I've given you uh, these good things for you to enjoy and for you to consume. And so I'm not so much knocking consumerism as an exclusively bad thing as much as today, we wanna speak about the balance between being a passive consumer versus an active contributor to the world and getting that balance right in our world. We're not advocating minimalism, although there's much I think we could learn from the minimalist movement, but rather looking at this balance between uh, passive consumption and creative or active communication in the world. I also wanna issue one more uh, disclaimer to say, at at times I'm gonna be speaking to uh, the way we consume goods and services, and at times also the way we consume entertainment and media. And I'm not gonna be uh, delineating these two things and separating them out. We're We're gonna kind of weave our way through both. And so if you can be gracious enough to us as we do that, I'm sure we're gonna have a lot of fun together as we unpack our world. The reality is that you and I live in a world that emphasizes so much on us as, inf- as individuals, on me and my wants and my needs and my, my desires. We're all kind of pursuing this version of the good life that awaits us. What's the good life, you ask? Well, well, the good life looks like what we see every day through thousands of advertisements that, that come our way, that describe it to us. We live with a daily economy where, where billions of rands and dollars are spent uh, trying to articulate and describe this good life for us. They, they do it through, I mean, it's a really interesting way that this happens, uh, where, where companies literally try and capture our attention and hold our attention for just long enough for another company to come along and to market to us some or other version of the good life. I mean, I don't know if you've realized this, it's kind of strange to think, but we've become the product. We've become not just the client, we've become the product. We use these free apps that we we make use of. And these free apps uh, generate content that is engineered so as to capture our attention and to hold it while others slip in these marketing ideas so as to, to sell us this vision of the good life. And these, these ads promote all sorts of things and experiences that promise to make us happy, that promise to, to fill our lives, uh, to, to, to lead us towards this vision of the good life. And the culmination is that we, we end up believing that all we need to do is to kind of imitate what we see on the TV, imitate what we see in lifestyle, lifestyle magazines and social media, believing that if we have this thing, if we can enjoy this experience, then our lives will be rich and full then we'll have it and this inner void within us will be filled. And the result is that so much of our lives are spent in kind of passive consumption mode rather than uh, active contribution or creative contribution. And I think it's hurting us as human beings. I wanna take a look and try and dissect it a little bit further. The problem is that we spend so much time in, in passive consumption, which promises to deliver massive satisfaction but it doesn't because human beings need so much more. I wonder if you can take a look with me at a graph that tracks on the the one axis, we see satisfaction uh, over time. And let's just take a look at this as a little illustration of what happens when we passively consume versus creatively contribute over time to our levels of satisfaction and enjoyment. Imagine I was to say to you, I want you to play me a song. I want you to play me a song. And there's two ways that you could do that, right? The first way you play me a song or you play yourself a song is by taking out your cell phone, uh, which has got a music app on it, or maybe taking out an iPod. And you take out this, uh, this uh, device and you hit play. And what happens is instantly a song is played on there and we see our levels of satisfaction rise. As you hear the song, it's an awesome tune. You like it, it makes you feel good. Your levels instantly of satisfaction uh, rise and, and so you enjoy it. But then what happens is over time, you listen to that song again, we listen to that song again and again and again. What happens is over time, eventually you've heard that song enough. It's no longer new, it's no longer exciting. It becomes, what's the word? It becomes boring. And, and so we, we see that over time, In passive consumption, our level of satisfaction diminishes. There's diminishing returns when we're in passive consumption mode. And what you've got to do then is you've got to find and move on to the next song. But imagine I was to say to you, play me a song. And rather than hand you an iPod or a cell phone, I handed you a guitar now. Now you can't play the guitar, 
I mean, just for illustration's sake, maybe some of you can, that's great. But imagine you can't play the guitar and I hand you this thing and, uh, and initially what happens is this is very hard, it's frustrating. The strings on a guitar are hard and your fingers are soft and it hurts and, uh, and you, your mind has an idea of what your fingers must do and they don't properly correlate and so it, what, what you hope in your heart it will sound like and what actually comes out of the guitar, they don't match up and this is initially, it's frustrating. In fact, the instant gratification of, of playing in, in creative contributor mode is initially negative. It's, 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 it's frustrating and, and oftentimes disappointing. But here's the thing, you persist and you keep going and you keep trying. And eventually what happens over time is you learn some new things. And what you discover is that your levels of satisfaction and enjoyment, they rise over time. And eventually they even far surpass the levels of enjoyment and satisfaction that you ever would have received by just pressing play. You see, you and I were created for so much more. This curve should worry us because if we're spending so much of our life in this mode, this curve looks like the curve of addiction where we're constantly trying to recover the same high that we initially had and experiencing diminishing turns, needing to look to more and more things to deliver it. We as human beings, yes, there's time for passive consumption, but it cannot be all that we're living for. It cannot take up the bulk of our lives. We're meant for so much more and we derive a greater satisfaction when we are creating and contributing to society. It's this pattern that, that actually is constantly shaping us and forming us as human beings. It shapes us at a fundamental level, the very level of our identity, our sense of belonging, our, our very loves and desires. We're constantly told, you need a clearer skin. Uh, you need whiter teeth, better shoes, a new PlayStation. That's what it's gonna take. We're told, if you had this holiday then, and this is where our unique version of the good life comes in. If you had this holiday then, you'd be a closer family. Uh, then you'd be so much happier and be more fulfilled. Or, or then you'd be the great adventurer you long to be. But the, but, but the line is that we're always just one purchase away from happiness. And with it comes the constant disapproval of my own life. Because I'm aware each time of how my own life and my own experiences don't match up. Uh, there's, this, there's this deep sense that I need more, that my life doesn't match up, that I'm missing out. And there's something I need that will, in a sense, complete me, if you will. And so we live with this low level angst and dissatisfaction where we're chasing for more. And can I tell you a secret? Some of the things, many of the things we're chasing are not even real. I mean, these days, authors are speaking about a hyper-reality. Hyper-reality, that there's a gap between what this product says it will do and what it will actually do in our lives. I mean, the bottom line is no one's teeth are really that white. And that when, when, when he or she smiles, it doesn't really sparkle. But, but you've now got a new hyper-real reality to compare yours to. And so your sense of personal dissatisfaction with your own life increases. If I'm honest with you, I think it's even shaped the way we do church and the way we, uh, the way we worship and, and, and participate in our Christianity. We can become consumers of faith and church. Where, where in the Disney story that Ryan so wonderfully articulated to us a few weeks ago, where, where I'm the prince or the princess or the hero, uh, the main character of the story, uh, Christianity then becomes about how I meet my faith needs, how I evaluate church according to what's in it for me and how much I can get out of it. And faith and church become just another co commodity that I consume to complete my life. But we need to see today that fundamentally Christianity and, and even church and our expression of Christianity and church cut against the values of this consumerism. I mean, Christianity is about different virtues altogether. The virtue of patience, the, the virtues of self-control, the virtues of generosity and sacrifice and contentedness. And church, church thrives when we show up regularly, even when we don't feel like it, regularly, not for what we can get out of it, but for what we can give and can contribute to the body. And, and ironically, that's how we end up getting the most out as well. 
And so the good news for us is there is another way. There's another way in church. There's another way in life as to how we can live. In the midst of all the pull and the pressure of the consumer world, God calls us to be capital C citizens, to live in an extraordinarily different way. And Lauren's gonna speak to us about how we can do that and what that looks like in a few moments. So who are we as capital C citizens? Well, we are the people of God, in the presence of God, filling the world with the likeness of God. So this is our big idea for the day. Let's recap what Genesis 1 tells us in verse 27 and 28 about us being citizens. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. And God blessed them. And God said to them, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the heavens and over every living thing that moves on the earth. Have you ever wondered what on earth am I here for? Well, this is it. This is what distinguishes human beings from the rest of God's good creation. It isn't true of mountain peaks and sunsets and even the most magnificent birds. The Father, Son, and Holy Spirit together made man in their image. They made human beings in their likeness. The Amplified Version says, with the same spiritual personality and moral likeness. Wow. So human beings are God's image-bearing creatures that he has placed in his world with a special calling. It's to order and fill it according to his very own likeness or nature of whose image we bear. Think about that for a moment. God created you and me and placed us in his world to order it and to fill it with his likeness. The original Greek word for dominion means to rule, to govern, to subdue or to have complete authority. Let's break it down to order the world. When God created the garden, he said that it was good, but his work wasn't finished. All the ingredients were there, all the raw materials were there, but they needed to be shaped and structured so that it could be filled. If it were a farm, we'd say the land is there, but it needs to be arranged and cultivated. Decisions need to be made about what crops belong where, what land needs to be plowed up so that it can be filled, filled with seeds and vines and wells. God created the world, but it's not a finished product world. The story in Genesis 1 starts in the garden and concludes in the book of Revelation in a city. And this is the the great progression that God always intended. In Paul's message two weeks ago in, in Hebrews 11, he spoke about this progression towards the great city our heavenly city. But how do we get from a garden in Genesis to a city in Revelation? Well, as my daughter Bethany answered when she overheard us asking this question, we'd take a taxi. But no, it's human beings, you and me as image bearers, ordering and filling the world with the likeness of God. We're ordering and filling it towards the great city where our capital C citizenship truly is. And all of this is to be done according to the likeness of God. That's why we're image bearers. So human beings as image bearers through being with God in the presence of God, reflect the likeness of God to the world. And we reflect his nature in how we order and fill the earth. Now, this isn't new to many of us. In fact, we've probably read the scripture many times, but we don't need new answers. What we need is to allow this fundamental truth to shape our lives and how we live. And when we do this, we are being like our creator because God loves justice. So we should love justice, working to make sure that those under our care and influence experience that justice. God loves purity, so should we as his image bearers be seeking to honor him with our thoughts and with our motives and with our actions. As we reflect his likeness, we reflect his beauty and his goodness. 
we reflect his kindness and his radical grace as we offer our broken lives far from perfect to be restored and used by him. In all of these actions, we're filling the earth and ordering it according to God's likeness. All of our lives displaying the glory of God. This series so far has shown, her, shown us how this has always been the call of God's citizens of heaven. From the days of Abraham through Israel and now extending to all nations through the reconciling power of the cross. And we as the church through the empowering and indwelling presence of God as his restored image bearers. We continue this work of restoring uh, the image of God where it's lost in the world. We're working as a church to bring beauty out of brokenness with hearts that yearn for and actively seek out justice and those that are far from Jesus. Which is why we need to talk about holiness next week. Because as citizens of heaven on earth, we don't reflect our culture. No, we reflect our king. Because we're the capital C citizens of God, his image bearers, we're going to be spending the next two weeks on justice. Because as his image bearers, we're filling the earth and ordering it according to his nature. And we do this actively, seeking out the places in our small C city where that image has been lost. Places of injustice and pain. And sometimes like Jesus, even to place ourselves in particular discomfort and risk to put the situations to right. So we're the people of God in the presence of God, filling the world with the likeness of God. And that's how we are effective image bearers when we're regularly in the presence of God. And if we're honest, we don't always live out this calling as effective image bearers, do we? It's only when we're regularly spending time in God's presence, in his word, that we can reflect his likeness and his nature. I've got this so wrong at times where I've worked so hard to display Jesus and to be like him and failed because I haven't been spending regular time in his presence. We need to work hard at our image bearing calling, but we also need to prioritize spending time with him. We need to seek him, to see him, to allow the gospel to go to work in our hearts and then we will display him. We need to regularly be in the presence of God. And then as the people of God, we give ourselves to the kinds of fruitful tending of the world that would cause the creator to say, behold, it is very good. If you do this, seeking to order and fill the world with the likeness of God in, in your daily work, in paid and unpaid, maybe as architects, as teachers, designers, business owners, moms and dads, and in your volunteer time, in serving others, you are living as a capital C citizen. That's our calling and that's your calling. Okay, so now we've got a clear understanding of, of our consumer world and our calling in life as capital C citizens. How then should we live? How do we navigate this trap? As Christians, we're called to give our lives to a different story. We're capital C citizens in the world but not of the world, how then should we live? So given that we're people who live in the presence of God, we're going to land with four challenges that are going to help us live as capital C citizens in our consumer world. So as Lauren said, four challenges. What's probably helpful for you to know is we actually, in compiling this message, came up with a bunch more that we've stuck into our life group guides. And so if you're going along to life group, there's a bunch of extra stuff there for you to chat through as well. But we wanted to land this one with four simple but hard-hitting challenges to put this into practice in our lives. And so I'll jump in with number one. And the first one is this. Come to Jesus to reorientate your heart around him. Come to Jesus and reorientate your heart 
around Jesus. At the, at the most basic level, the reason consumerism is so hard to fight and the, the reason we're so vulnerable to it is that our lives have become curved inward on our souls. Rather than reflecting the glory and the wonder of the one in whose image we've been made, we've become captivated at cultivating our own image. And so until we're genuinely satisfied with Jesus, we're always gonna be vulnerable to the pulls of consumerism until Jesus genuinely becomes the most beautiful and precious preoccupation of our souls. We're always gonna be drawn like a magnet towards the pull of consumerism. In fact, so much of consumerism and so much of our consuming, our consuming, our consuming is about a distraction because we don't wanna face the reality of our lives. We don't want to face sometimes the emptiness of our hearts, the very fears that we carry and the insecurities. And so much easier than, as, Pascal, as Blaise Pascal said all those years ago, uh, we, we struggle to just sit in a room simply by ourselves. M m much rather than doing that, we reach for a series. We reach for something to distract us and to preoccupy us. And I want to put to you today, the only way to truly see consumerism find its appropriate place in your life is to be captivated by one that is so much greater than any product or any experience or any service we could ever find. And that's Christ. And so it's when we put Him in His proper place in our lives, reorientating our hearts around Him, that all these other things find their appropriate place. And so the first point is reorientate your heart around the person of Jesus. Okay, and secondly, seek to live your life as a contributor who consumes rather than a consumer who contributes. As capital C citizens of our heavenly city deployed here in this moment, we should steward our current moment well. Realize that everything you have is a gift from God for you to steward in your great calling. This great calling is lived out in the unique context of our lives as we steward what God has given us right now. So right now, God has given me the ability to think, uh, to teach and to sing, but that could all change tomorrow in a sudden accident or illness. Thank God that it's, it's only small C circumstances. If that were to happen, God would still be God and his people would still have a mission in this world. I would still be an image bearer and a part of this local church, scratching my head to see how I could contribute and in new ways and still be part of God's great restoration of the world. Maybe your income has changed during COVID and man, I am truly sorry. But can I remind you of this, that God is still God and you are still an image bearer. And there is meaning and purpose as you go on to live your life, filling the earth with his likeness in the new small C circumstances of your life. What a helpful provoke. The third challenge I want to put to us today is to be a thoughtful consumer to be a thoughtful consumer. As capital C citizens of heaven, we need to give some real thought to the things that we consume while away from home in our small C citizenship lives. And so obviously we start by thinking, how do we live with less waste and recycle and those, those sorts of things as well. But, but I think probably the bigger challenge is uh, we're learning as a family is how to do some more research into the way in which the way we consume is shaping uh, the world by filling the earth and ordering the earth. I don't know if you know this, but uh, I mean, you think, for instance, when, when we as, as human beings get a new fixation with a particular product, a new industry is born, another one shuts down. And then simultaneously, maybe new factories are, are launched and others shut down. And then new families are relocated, all because we are consuming a different product. And so uh, uh, you don't often think about that when you purchase your product and take it home. And so we should think about the way in which what we buy and what we do with our lives is shaping the world by filling it and ordering it. These things matter. I know it's hard and sometimes it means spending more time researching, but we need to be thinking about the way in which we allocate our budgets and how that is shaping the world for better, making it more like heaven on earth or for worse. And then fourthly, actively live out the great commitment by serving and caring for your local church community. 
You see, consumerism is making us more and more disconnected from community and genuine relationships as people. And, and not just during this period of lockdown. As a generation, we have valued arm's length, social media, friends over real life-changing relationships. The thing is that image bearing is a team sport. No one can restore the image of a Trinitarian God alone. Only a people can do it. And in order to break the power of individualism, we need to sow our time, our talents and our treasure into our local church family. By doing this, we value people. We take time to grow, to serve one another, to share and worship in ways that resist consumerism and discontentment. This image restoring calling comes with and requires a new family, the church. As we love one another and experience the presence of God corporately in worship and prayer, we together reflect the person and the presence of God into the world. If you're not yet a Christ follower or new to church, this is what being part of a church family is all about. And you see the church as a family is especially for those who in the twists and turns of a broken world have lost their human family. Widows, orphans, refugees and strangers. Exactly the kind of people that are often forgotten in our individualistic world. Here, we together as a family of brothers and sisters, fellow image bearers, restored to God, discovering our new identity in Him. Together, we are filling the world with the likeness of our Father. In our current season of um, online church, we're having to seek out new and acceptable ways of being contributors, as Luke spoke about, in our church family, rather than passive consumers. It's so tempting during lockdown in our Sunday meetings to, to treat them as, as another episode on Netflix that we're just consuming. What do you need to do to help you to dial in and participate in worship and prayer and in connecting with your church family? This will be different for everyone, but we all need to find ways to lean in in this season and discover what contributing looks like for each one of us. Okay, so thank you so much, Lauren. Four things to leave us as a challenge. As I break the rules a little bit here, I'm going to step through this amazing scene. And it just so happens that there's a guitar right behind me as a symbol of our capital C citizenship, to be the people, the people of God who give themselves actively to, to answering the question, not, not how do I get the most out of this world, but how do I fill it? How do I order it in the most beautiful, creative way so that our world looks more like the world that God originally had in mind, the world that God put into our hearts as His uh, kingdom image bearers? How do we make it more on earth like it is in heaven? by giving ourselves to this. And we do that four ways. We reorientate our hearts around Jesus. Nothing else, no one else could satisfy us the way in which Christ can. We seek to live our lives as contributors who consume, not consumers with a side of contributing in the world. We are, we're gonna be those people who are more thoughtful about what we consume. And then we actively live out the great commitment as we resolve to be the people of God, Spending time in the people of God, in the presence of God as we drink in from the one in whose image we're made and then go out into the world and reflect the very nature of God. I'd love to pray for us as we take up these four challenges. Let's pray together in our homes, on our screens. Let's put our faith towards Jesus to kickstart a fresh work in our lives. Heavenly Father, thank you so much that we are image bearers. We're in your image. You, be you bestowed upon us the greatest gift, the most incredible calling. In a world that would try and like lull us, would try and thrum us and um, to, to settle for passive consumerism. God, raise our gaze. God, give us a fresh, inspiring commission right now. God, would you, Holy Spirit, right now in our homes, Holy Spirit, would you put your finger on just habits and practices in our lives? Things that 
need to right now from this moment begin changing. We recognize as image bearers, we're not on our own, but you, Holy Spirit, you coach us and you lead us. Would you do that right now in our homes? Would you put fresh faith in us to come at life in a new way, to understand our true calling is to fill the earth and to order the earth according to your likeness? Amen. Thank you, uh, Luke and Lauren. Uh, I love those four challenges. And as Life Group's meeting this week, there are going to be eight more that are going to get added into the conversation, which I look forward to. Personally, for me, I love that graph, just comparing how, how passive consumption can just give you that initial kick, but diminishing returns over time versus being an active contributor. As, as made in the image of God, we can... Uh, take on that call from the very beginning of the book of Genesis. So I'd love to do more of that in my life, of rolling up my sleeves and finding out from God what it means to be truly human. And maybe you can take up that guitar as well. Maybe I can. Maybe you I'll, can. I'll steal the prop here and take it home with me, but probably I won't. Yeah, probably not. But happy Women's Day to all the ladies out there. Um, we've All of us, all South African citizens, have been gifted a public holiday tomorrow. And so let's enjoy that gift of a day off um, in the presence of God. Let's not fill that day with uh, scrolling through our phones, checking out our news feed, our Twitter feed, our Facebook feed, but let's be those who, like Luke and Lauren urged us to do, seek the presence of God. Let's be those who just enjoy Him tomorrow and see that day as a real bonus and a gift. And we want to serve you. And so there are bunches of links, whether you're watching this on YouTube or Facebook or whatever platform you find yourself on. Have a look at those links. There's a website full, full of tough questions that you might want answers to. There's an Ignite booklet for those who are new to the faith or exploring the faith. There are just so many different ways in which we're trying to connect you. So please take us up on uh, any of the, the links that are, are available to you. We're one click away from connecting. So thank you very much for gathering with us today. Have a fantastic Sunday and public holiday tomorrow. Cheers. Cheers. Hi, Bosch AM. We are the Hampton family. My name is Mike. My name is Jane. My name's Rachel. My name's Emma. It's great to see all of you. And we just want to say a big thank you to Luke and Lauren for serving us so well and taking us deeper into the Citizens series. Thank you, guys. We appreciate you. It is great to see all of you this Sunday morning. Yeah. So great that you could join us. If this is your first time joining us, please won't you fill in our guest form that is in the link below. And if you're needing pastoral support, there is a phone number that you can contact you. There's someone on the other end of the line who wants to speak to you, yeah. who wants to support you, and who wants to pray for you. Now we're gonna carry on with some announcements. And to do that, I'm gonna hand the ball over to Mike. Thank you, Jane. I want to talk quickly about the survey that many of you filled in. Almost 400 of you filled in that survey. Well, we want to say a big thank you for that. And we know that Sunday mornings, it's so tempting to stay in your warm bed or maybe look out the window and think it's a great day for the beach or to head onto the mountain. And so we are so uh, grateful and we're celebrating the fact that 73% of you said you are engaging in our online services on Sunday morning. That's a real win. And uh, we are super encouraged by how many of you gave positive feedback in that survey. Survey. In fact, it really is a huge encouragement to us as a leadership team to know how many of you are saying thank you and you're grateful for it and it's serving you really well. We just want to really encourage you to pass that on personally. Maybe it's to a life group leader, your theology group leader, uh, your Kids Rock Frequency Ignite leader. Why don't you send them a personal message and say, hey, we really appreciate what you're doing all the way behind the scenes to make sure that we still stay connected and we serve well. All right, over to you, Jane. Great, my turn. So um, on Tuesdays, we have a prayer meeting that happens 7.30 in the morning and 6 p.m. at night. And this week, we really want to be focusing on our educators and on the education system. Uh, we recognize that this has been a really tough year for the teachers in our congregation, in our community, in our city, in the world. They're having to try and figure out how to teach online for the first time. They have been back to school, not back to school, the risks associated to teaching and being in a classroom and having to maintain social distance and making sure that you're well sanitized, it's, it's a really tough job. And so if you're an educator, we wanna invite you specifically to our prayer meetings on Tuesday so that we can pray for you. And if you're not an educator, we invite you to these prayer meetings to come and pray with us. We wanna come alongside our teachers, 
We want to support them and we want to be lifting them up to God. Our prayer meetings have continued. Our life groups have continued. And this is my reminder to you. Yes, we might not meet on base physically, but church carries on. Our ministries have been able to continue through these times. And so I just want to make you aware of some things that have been happening, especially on the base. So we're not able to meet as a church on the base, but we've been able to do quite a lot at the base. Um, and to be aware, we've made sure that we've um, adhere to all the um, social distancing guidelines, the COVID guidelines and regulations to make sure that people are safe and protected. But what we've been able to do is use the base as a space to be able to store some resources for, and I must just get this right, this is for the Bontaheville Community Center. So we've been able to have donations that we've been, that have been given to them stored there so that they can have access to it when they are able to come and get it. We've used the base as our base for our mask making initiative and we've been able to send out so many masks from there. And this Saturday past, so yesterday, 80 volunteers, and I've got to get this number right, they were able to pack 20,000 food parcels for an organization called Rise Against Hunger. How amazing is that? It's also good to know that there's actually a team of volunteers who will be staying on base for the next few weeks. They are helping at Red Cross um, Children's Hospital. They're volunteering there. And so they'll be staying in our base while they are volunteering. So it's so beautiful to be able to see that even though we can't meet in our base, God is using our base for beautiful ministry opportunities to be able to serve those around us in the city around us. Okay, Mike, back to you. My turn. Thank you, Jane. And not only all of those things, but our ministries are continuing as well. That's our theology course on Tuesday night. Many of our life groups are continuing as well. And our redemption ministries are starting to kick off too. So uh, just one to highlight is our Living With Loss Redemption Group. That's next week, Monday, kicking off on the 17th of August. So for all these details, please check out the mailer. Over to you, Jane. Great. So that's it from us. We hope you have a wonderful Sunday. And our girls have something special to say. Happy Women's Day! Fantastic. Enjoy your day, all the women. And uh, Bosh AM, we'll catch you next week. Have a great week. Bye! Bye.